coming from Poland, Russia and Croatia. So men's 5,000 metres, T12. It's uh, a long race, this one. 12 and a half laps. 12 and a half laps is a long way on the track. And we don't see, I can confidently predict, we won't see a world record or a Paralympic record or even any personal bests in this because these finals, they're just cat and mouse. Nobody goes very fast in these, do they? They're cat and mouse. This will be a little bit different than the wheelchair in that, that last night we saw David Weir in the, wheel, in the 5,000 meters in the, in the wheelchairs. And the thing is that you get such an advantage by drafting. You don't get quite as much adra advantage running as you do in a wheelchair. So there's just, more so just potential. Explain, drafting a bit. Oh, you? drafting. Good, good, good. Is it being in the slipstream? So of the it's being in the slipstream slip of the person in front of you. That's a relief. I thought it might mean joining the army. <laughs> <laughs> no risk of that, I don't no. think. And uh, so, how much of an advantage is it then? It, it is. It, I've heard as much as 25% advantage. Really? Yeah. So it's a significant advantage. And you're working a lot less hard, less hard when you're in the slipstream. These guys, there is, there's more of a perceived advantage when you're running. There's a little bit of an advantage of a little bit of aerodynamic advantage, but at the same time, it's more of somebody else is setting the pace, and it's easier to follow somebody. But you might see some guys who are going to go to the front and really get the rest of the pack to drop off because. They're, they're not having that advantage nearly as much. And T12, that's uh, visual impairment. So we see uh, one of the competitors in lane eight, Santero of Argentina with a guide runner. This is uh, <coughs> what uh, happens in these races. The gun is off. So World record on this is 1424.02. And that's Henry Kirwa of Kenya. Who started in uh, lane nine. He's currently in second place. Exactly, and you see it's starting to string out already where, where three athletes are going straight to the front. The athletes in the second pack are not likely to catch back up, and as you see, a huge gulf developing here. So you're seeing your gold, silver, and bronze pretty well defined in the first lap, but there can be some jumpy nerves, and so sometimes you do get some guys who are going to jump off, off, the, off the front and might well come back to the pack. So Henry Kerwa tracking uh, Chen Tuf of Morocco, it is, who's in the lead, wearing the, the glasses, number 2507. And he's run a personal best of 14.33, so he's not likely to be one of those guys who's going to come back to the pack. So he's setting uh, the early pace, Chen, Chen Tuf of Morocco, Kerwa of uh, Kenya, tracking him. And we're just going back to the guided runner from Argentina, Santero. His guide's called uh, Jorge Luchik. But uh, three runners uh, have gone away there. And it's uh, the Moroccan leading the Kenyan at the moment. Still a long, long way to go. It's the Tunisian, uh, Zhu, in third place at the moment. So Morocco, Kenya, and Tunisia. And you can see that was a 62, almost 63 second lap, which is a fast lap for, you know, that 63 second lap will get you to a, a 4, 412 mile. So that's a, that's a fast mile if you're running, if you're running it this way, but that's the pace that these guys are going to run. Chen Tu for Morocco Kerwe of uh, Kenyan, the world record holder in Zoo of Tunisia in third place. 12 and a half laps of the track. So, uh, we may come away from the action at some point just to see what's happening in the, uh, the women's long jump. If you've been following that, it's been absolutely fascinating with uh, Kuczarek of uh, Poland setting consecutive, four consecutive world records. Just only one of her five jumps wasn't a new world record. And she's leading Zagova of Russia and Rostovsky of Croatia. But it's the Moroccan Chen Tuf in the lead. Kerwer of Kenya in second place, the world record holder. And Zhu of Tunisia keeping up with them. So just looking at the PBs, personal bests, Kerwa of uh, Kenya, 14.41.80. Uh, uh, he's in second place at the moment. The leader, uh, Chen Tu, 14.33.37. And uh, the Tunisian runner, who uh, at the moment is just tracking them, 14.40.06. Beautiful evening for running here in the Olympic Stadium at Stratford in East London for these Paralympic Games London 2012. Hope you're enjoying our coverage.
here on uh, Paralympic.org and uh, on uh, TV stations throughout the world. Thanks to everyone who's liked the Facebook group, uh, Paralympic Games. Now, it did give me the numbers individually, but once it gets up to 100k, it just gives me a thumbs up and tells me it's 100k. I think you, it probably doesn't go above that. No sign of the cup of tea, we were promised, but uh, we've, we've done our bit to get the Facebook group up. So well done, everyone, for supporting Paralympic Games, which uh, are a shining beacon, an example to everyone throughout the world. And I know that the, uh, there's been more people watching the, the Paralympic Games across the world on the web, or just on the first day of coverage, than watch the whole of the Beijing Games. So it really has uh, absolutely taken the world by storm, the London 2012 Paralympics. So these three have been in this uh, position now. Chen Tu of Morocco out at front. Kirwa of Kenya in second place and Zhu of Tunisia as they come up to lap the uh, Argentinian with the guide runner. Now, can you tell from looking at that who looks comfortable, Chris, out of those three? I would, I would say that uh, the Kirwa looks, looks comfortable sitting there in second. And, and some of that might just well be that Chen Tu has a bit of a look on his face when he's running. I mean, running can, running's a painful thing, and these guys are running in and around four-minute miles right now. You can see that they're putting some distress, that, uh, that Chintu has been putting some distress on, on everybody right now, and they're getting a gap, gaining a gap. He's getting a gap to second place mm. and gaining a bigger gap to third place. The Tunisian's going to do well to keep up with these two, I think. And it's a, it's a really fast... They are definitely running a really fast race right now. The pace is excruciating. And we'll see, we'll see what happens right now. So when I confidently predicted, the one thing I will tell you is that there won't be a world record in this because it's all cat and mouse in these long finals. I'm going to be proved wrong, aren't I? It's going to be another record. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> there, is that, there is that potential. I stand to be shot at, but I don't mind because the Facebook group's liking Paralympic Games has gone above 100,000, and uh, that was my mission tonight. Now, Chen Tooth is stretching away. In fact, uh, Kirwa of Kenya, I think, is thinking he's going a bit too fast. I think he is. Though, back. though it looks like Kirwa, Kirwa looks like his his stride is certainly shortened up. This is this is a fast pace because generally they're running about a running a little over four and a half minute miles, and Chen Tuf is is running a lot closer to to a four ten four fifteen. Now Chen Tuf is looking very very comfortable in his running style, but I just wonder if he's got this wrong and he's gone out too fast because Kirwa is the world record holder, the Kenyan in second place with Zhu Tunisia in third. And I just wonder if, if between them, those two will not be able to haul this guy back in if he has gone too fast, if his legs begin to go towards the end. See, there's a much different turnover right now. But we'll see how that plays out, because sometimes you hit that wall and that's it. There's nothing you can do. You, can't, you can go from running 66-second laps, which that last was, lap was a 66-second lap, which most people are relatively hard-pressed to run a 66-second lap, just one of them. This is 12 and a half, 66 second laps. Men's high jump, uh, as you can see in the middle there, has got underway. And uh, we'll show you the best bits of that later on. And also the, uh, the women's long jump continuing. It's been a phenomenal competition with uh, Karolina Kucharczyk of uh, Poland. Tentuf is opening up almost a, almost a 50 meter gap at this point. And it's really, this is a time trial. This is where you think, okay, I need to hurt as much as I can possibly hurt and put it down. I've already made my move. And he's staying right around. He's slowing down slightly. He was 66 and change for the, for the previous lap and now is 67 low. So he's not too much different. But just trying to maintain that pace and certainly maintain that pace without somebody else right there with you can be a much bigger challenge. This is like a training run. And because there's two of them chasing him, they can help each other out, can't they? And... Uh it's a little bit easier, though. Their turnover slowed considerably once they dropped off of the back. That's not to say that they might be able to recover just a little bit. And you can see the Kemba at this point is, is hanging in back of the Tunisian. And he might just be playing for second place. Might be pay, playing for the silver medal. So at some point, the, the, the two runners have to decide, are we going to work together to try and catch this bloke up? Or are we going to battle against each other for the silver medal? And uh, they don't seem to be working much as a team at the moment. They really don't seem to be working much as a team. And, and at this point, I don't think that they're really thinking a whole lot about first place. They might be conceding first place. And unless, 
that's another he's just clicking off the 66 sec 66 67 second lap so that's unless he comes back to them unless he totally ties up i think this is his race and he went right from the beginning went straight to the front put a hard pace that strung the whole pack out there were two other people who went with him and then he broke them it's an impressive run showing no signs at all of tiring at the moment no and in a little bit it's helping a little bit he's got a little bit of lap traffic here that he can pick up so he's got somebody to chase his head's beginning to bob a little bit one of the first signs of of real fatigue and he's about two-thirds of the way through a little bit less than two-thirds of the way through this 5,000 meters and Kewa of Kenya does seem to just be tracking um, Zhu with a view to coming past to get the silver at the end. He's, he's given up hope of catching Chen Tuf, I think. I think so. It's extraordinary to see a race run like this. It's, it's very rare to see someone just go out like that so early on on his own. I mean, you do see people try and break away, but not this early in a race. He, he has to have some pretty good confidence in what he's able to do, and he's running some pretty consistent times. He's slowing slightly. We saw him starting off with 63 second laps, then he was at 66 and 67. That was just a 68 second lap. But still, right now, he's 100 meters ahead of second place. Well, he's got the best uh, season's best time, so he's obviously very confident in his own ability. Down the back straight here. At the, uh... He's running one of the greatest races I've, I've seen. If he can hold on and keep this, and he looks like he's doing, looks like he's doing really well. This could be another world record time that we're looking at. He's certainly on world record pace right now. Well, I'm just a bit disappointed in Kiwa of Kenya, the world record holder. It's uh, that he can't uh, at least try and get back. But this is a fantastic the, run from the Moroccan. The thing that's a little bit deceiving is that, that the Moroccan and the, or the, the Kenyan and the Tunisian who are in second and third. So that's a 68-6. So he's, he's slowing slightly, but he's not slowing too much. And there's nobody breathing down his neck right now. That might have been part of his design was to get out and, and blow people up and then continue and get on his pace. And he looks to be maintaining his pace really well. You see, he's finishing the turn. So that's 100 meters right there. So there and he is midway through the straightaway. Yeah. So he's gaining time every time. He's about 150 meters in front. Yeah. So they're not going to catch him unless something goes wrong for him. And uh, he's not likely to pull a muscle. It's a beautiful warm evening and he's nicely warmed up. And, uh, Stranger things have happened, that's for sure. Athletes can, athletes can have some serious difficulty as they're going into a race, and especially when they stress themselves right up to the breaking point. And he's certainly trying to stay below the breaking point, but you can see the pain on his face that this doesn't feel great. This is, uh, this is a whole lot of pain. It'll feel a lot better when he finishes. Well, he's got the look of a man who is going for a world record because he, he looks possessed. He does not need to be pushing himself. Like you say, he's 150, maybe even 180 meters ahead. Just two laps to go. He could slow. He could jog it now and still win gold. But he's clearly trying to set some kind of personal best, maybe even a world record, a Paralympic record. I and think that's exactly his design right now. And now we see the Kenyan coming past the Tunisian. Koa has uh, waited. I think he's realizes he can't get the gold but he wants to make sure he can get away from zoo to get the silver and still chen tu pushing 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 all the way he's not he's not out for an evening stroll is he he's no this is a race against the clock for him this is that world record he's looking for the gold medal but he's looking for a world record as well and he's coming with 600 meters left just a reminder the world record was uh, set by henry kerwa the man in silver medal position in uh, beijing in the September 2008 at the last Paralympics in a time of 14.24.02. So let's watch his split time as he goes over the line with one lap to go. 14.24.02. So He's in great shape. He could break it by, he could break it by a lot. Okay, so let's see his time as he goes over the line here. The clock won't stop, so we'll have to stop it. It's about 12.46. So he, he's going to break the world record. He's going to break the world record by, by 10 seconds or more. And you can sense the crowd know that now, and the Everybody's noise, behind him, the noise in the stadium. They're chasing him around the track. They want to see this world record. It's been an impressive race right from the beginning, and I didn't think that he'd be able to 
be able to hold this pace, but he looked up, he started right in the beginning and said, this is it, this is what I'm gonna do. There is a race for second place. You see, we've got Kirwa and, and we have uh, Zoo of Zoo Tunisia. Of Tunisia. And there will be some tactics in that final 400 for those guys racing for the silver medal and the bronze medal. But this is the real race right here. And look at him. He's digging deep. He went 69 seconds for that last lap. He's trying to trying to run a negative split on this last one. This the crowd's chasing him in. El Amin Chentouf of Morocco. Remember the world record 14.24.02. We said he'd take 10 seconds off that. He could take 20 seconds off it. He could. He could go under 14 seconds. It looks like he's definitely going to go under 14 seconds. So, oh. wow. Just absolutely annihilated the right. existing world record. Right. He ran the last lap in 67.04. A new world record by a long, long way for the Moroccan Chentouf. Now, it's Kiwa against Zhu. Kiwa on the near side, but Zhu's coming strong again. The Tunisian's coming strong. Kiwa comes back at him, but the Tunisian's going to get him. Great race for silver. Zoo of Tunisia and Kiwa of Kenya gets the bronze. But it's all tonight about that Moroccan Chentouf with her new world record of 13.53.76. First man ever under 14 minutes. Previous record was 14.24. So he's taken, what, 9 plus 24, 33 seconds off the world record. Phenomenal. Absolutely incredible. And, and the thing is that Kiwa and Zoo, or Zoo and Kiwa, gave you a great perspective on that because both of them broke the existing world record. Absolutely. They good. weren't even remotely in the race, but they broke the existing world record. Good spot. Which just told you just how well Chen Tuf ran, and he ran right from the beginning, and he had to have designs on running this, and now he's going to pose in front of his new world record time with his flag. It does not get much better than that. And actually, I am I am speculating because I've never done this, <laughs> but that looks pretty darn good. It does. You've never done what? Never set a world record? Never set a world record, no. I never got to pose in front of the clock with the world record time at my flag. And, you know, I, I wish that I had done it. I think like most athletes here, that's one of the hopes is to do something that nobody, one, that nobody had ever done before, but two, that nobody had ever thought was possible. So this crowd is great, just cheering everybody home as well. I saw phenomenal, phenomenal competition, and you see some great times as well. But I, I think that the Chentuf, Chentuf ruined our perspective as far as this race is concerned because he went so much faster than everybody else, and it makes these other runners look slow. But these other runners are running really, really fast times. You'd be hard pressed in most races to find people who are going to run. A 30 second, a 30 minute, 30 minute, 30, a little over 30 minute 10K, or a under, under 15 minute 5K. This is this is incredible. You've seen you've seen some tremendous racing here tonight. And still, the Argentinian with the guide runner out on the course, and he's getting a great reception from the crowd. He is getting a great reception and well deserved reception. This is for a phenomenal athlete as well. A phenomenal athlete who just happened to be overshadowed by a more phenomenal athlete in Chentuf. Chentuf, that's got to be that's going to be one of the fastest times. We might have to look that up. I think Jeremy to see what the fastest 5Ks in the world are this year because that's that's got to be that's a that's a legitimate race that you just saw right here. 31 years of age, El Amin Chentuf, setting a new world record. But here comes Santero of Argentina with the guide runner and the crowd rise to him. And he's applauding the crowd as he runs. And the guide runner just steering him over the line. And a lovely big smile and a great cheer for the Argentinian. Well done, fella. The Brits do like an underdog. And he's come in four minutes after the leader in the race who set a world record he's enjoying his moment in the spotlight posing with his guide runner and his time 17 minutes 30.19 the winning time 13 53 76 for El Amin Chentouf Zoo of Tunisia with a PB of 14 19 97 Henry Kerr of Kenya with a PB 
in third place, 14-27-6. Neves of Spain was fourth with a regional record.